This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. The Emmys, where you get an award, and you get an award, and you get an award, and you get an award. award. From, you get... The, from the pop culture bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife Free Comics on iTunes, or our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So the Emmy nominations are out. Yep. The Television Academy keeps trying to tweak the award categories, generally to the detriment of the show. You know, I, I don't know even what the point of tweaking them is. You know, they need to tweak the voters, if anything. That's the issue. Because they can't tweak the voters directly. They're like, let's goad them into doing what we want them yes. to do. So the comedy and drama show nominees went up to seven each. Sort of a reflection of the uh, Oscars going up to 10 for right. best Right, and because there's so much more on the air now. Mm-hmm. So they've now arbitrarily decided that a comedy show is 30 minutes or less, and a drama is over 30 minutes. And that's just not right. Which screws over shows like Jane the Virgin, who, yeah. by the way, got virtually nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a show can argue to get into the other category. They can mm-hmm. put up a case to the Academy and see if they can get moved from one to the other. They're not calling them miniseries anymore. They're calling them limited series. And the okay. rule is, for a limited series, at least 150 minutes, mm-hmm. a complete non-recurring story, mm-hmm. no ongoing story or characters in later seasons. Okay. Which seems basically like they set it to say, yes, shows like American Horror Story and True Detective <laughs> can fit in that. Yes. <laughs> You have to appear in at least 50% of the episode, in less, in less than, than 50% of the episodes, to be a guest actor. Okay. There's now separate prosthetic and non-prosthetic makeup categories, <laughs> as well as separate period slash fantasy and contemporary costume categories. Well, otherwise the period fantasy is always, always going to win. Yeah. yeah. There's also an... Outstanding Special Visual Effects in a Supporting Role. <laughs> Which seems odd. Because there's odd. there is already Outstanding Special Visual Effects. Yes. <laughs> as a separate yes. category. But how does it operate in a supporting role? We don't know. Ah. Now there are of course also unofficial rules <laughs> that you that can help. pretty much use to predict who's yeah. going to win. Mm-hmm. There's a split vote. So if there's two people from the same series or property nominated, they're likely to split the vote and not right. win. There is the dead zone. If you've died. <laughs> and there's the final season lock. Yes. Yeah, so if, <laughs> if you're not going to be eligible again and you haven't won before, it's likely you're going to win. So let's take a look at some of the categories and the nominees. Beginning with Outstanding Variety Talk Series. And here's where one of those rules kicks in. Right. So our nominees are The Colbert Report, Daily Show with Jon Stewart, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, which I do love, but I don't think belongs in the Variety Talk series no. so much. I mean, because it's only once a week. Right. Uh, Late Show with David Letterman and The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Right. Right. And we both predict that uh, David Letterman will take the award. Because you're going with the last season lock rule. And even though the Colbert Report is not going to be on again, he has another show. And... He will be in a talk show again. And and Daily Show just squeaks over to next year. Yes. So he can get his last season lock win next year. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Outstanding TV movie. We have Agatha Christie's Pro, Bessie, Grace of Monaco... Hello, Ladies, the Movie, Killing Jesus, and Nightingale. And we both seem to have picked the HBO movies. You picked Bessie, I picked yeah. Nightingale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I don't think it, it makes any difference here. I, I don't even know if this is a relevant category anymore. Yeah, because considering that two of the, the, the nominees, uh, Agatha Christie's Perot and Killing Jesus, come to you respectively from Acorn TV... Acorn TV only does British television shows. It's uh, sort of like a Netflix for British TV. Oh, okay. And Nat Geo. (laughs) Yeah. How is Nat Geo coming up with best TV movie? Right. And then then there's a nominee from Lifetime and the rest are from HBO. So there's no network television at all in there. No, which is you see that a lot in the Emmys now. And I just don't think that's a relevant category. Right. We then have Outstanding Animated Program, which is part of the Creative Arts Awards, a.k.a. the Kids Table. Yes. (laughs) When we start with Archer, 
Bob's Burgers, Over the Garden Wall, South Park, and The Simpsons. The Simpsons will never win again. No. No. It's going to be a perennial nominee, but it will never win again. Exactly. I think it may be Bob's Burgers years. It's been getting a lot of nice buzz, but as has your choice, Archer. Archer, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a toss-up between one of those two. I, I can guarantee you South Park is never going to win the Emmy. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Outstanding character voice over performance. So this would be a voice in one of those uh, animated shows. Right. And we have Hank Azaria from The Simpsons, Don Castellaneta from The Simpsons, Seth Green from Robot Chicken, Tress McNeil from The Simpsons, and John Roberts from Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what voices does Tress McNeil do? Do you know? Uh, uh, I think Crazy Cat Lady. I think uh, she does one of the teachers. I think maybe she does uh, Miss Hoover. Uh, yeah. So, I, I think she did a special guest type role. Okay. Yeah, she's not one of the major players on the show. Again, with three nominees from The Simpsons, it's unlikely that any of those people will win. Which, um, I, except you think Dan Castellaneta will. Yeah, yeah, I'm bucking the trend of the, of the split vote on this. I, I'm going to stick with uh, um, Bob's Burgers, although I'd love it if Seth Green won. I, but I've that's another one that's Green. not going to happen. Yeah. Outstanding guest actor in a comedy series. Uh, this is the who's the most famous and oldest rule. Oh, okay. Is that what you're going by <laughs> yes. in this one? Mel Brooks for The Comedians. Louis C.K. for Saturday Night Live. Paul Giamatti for Inside Amy, Amy Schumer. Bill Hader for SNL. John Hamm for The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And Bradley Whitford for Transparent. I did like that John Hamm was nearly unrecognizable yeah. in part of his role yes. on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I'm picking Bradley Whitford because I think Transparent has a lot of buzz in Hollywood right now. I think it does, but I'm going with oldest and most famous Mel Brooks. <laughs> Outstanding guest actress in a comedy series. We have Pamela Adlin from Louie, Elizabeth Banks, Modern Family, Christine Baranski, Big Bang Theory, Joan Cusack, Shameless, Tina Fey, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and Gabby Hoffman from Girls. Do you think, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe Girls has lost its luster a little bit. I think it has. And in that case, if it's not the Girls, I think it's going to be Elizabeth Banks. And that's who I picked was Elizabeth Banks. You can assume, right now I think you can assume for the most part, Big Bang Theory, I think the, the as you notice through this, there's not going to be a lot of nominees from that show. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because the, the voters have decided, oh, they're making too much money. Or they're <laughs> making so much money they don't need awards. Yeah, I guess. Outstanding supporting actor in a comedy series. Andre, Andre Brower, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Titus Burgess, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Ty Burrell, Modern Family. Adam Driver, Girls. Tony Hale, Veep. Michael Keegan, Keegle, Keegan. Michael Key for Key and Peel. We, well, we both picked uh, Tony Hale in Veep for winning. I just think that that show has more of a following. And he's won before. And he's won before. And Emmys, the Emmy voters love to vote the same person over and over. But I'd really love to see Brooklyn Nine-Nine win something. As I would I. No oh, question. That is such a great show. Yes. Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. This is a huge list. It is. <laughs> Mayim Bialik, Big Bang Theory. Uh, Julie Bowen, Modern Family. Anna Chum Chlumsky, Veep. Gabby Hoffman, Transparent. Allison Janney, Mom. Jane Krakowski, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Kate McKinnon, SNL. Nisi Nash, Getting On. Uh, you can kind of eliminate, uh, I think, SNL. You can eliminate... Getting on, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so you're going with? I'm, again, sticking with transparent, I think. I, I'm i pretty sure. I think the, the Academy maybe will realize that they kind of screwed over Big Bang Theory in the nominations. <laughs> and so they're going to give it to Mia Biala. Except that she's got a lot of weird other things going on, tending to be like, almost an anti-vaxxer and stuff, so maybe they won't um, want to give it to her for that. Okay, I, I, yeah, you're probably right. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Outstanding lead actor in a comedy series. Anthony Anderson in Blackish, Don Cheadle in House of Lies, Louis C.K. in Louis, Will Forte, The Last Man on Earth, Matt LeBlanc in Episodes, William H. Macy in Shameless, and Jeffrey Tambor in Transparent. And we are both going with Jeffrey Tambor because the... <laughs> Due to the political climate right now, mm 
It, the timing is absolutely perfect for for him to win this. <laughs> yes, and not only that, but a lot of the other um, nominees are just too out there. I think, right. you know. Yeah, and you also notice uh, that uh, Jim Parsons nowhere to be seen mm -hmm. after he's won several times. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, Edie Falco, Nurse Jackie, Lisa Kudrow, The Comeback, Lou, uh, Julie Louis-Dreyfus, Veep, Amy Poehler, Parks and Rec, Amy Schumer, Inside Amy Schumer, Lily Tomlin, Grace and Frankie. If Amy Poehler doesn't win this, there's something wrong with the Emmys. Exactly. Yeah, We're both going to be very disappointed, and that's who we're going for. Mm -hmm. Outstanding guest actor. In a drama series. Alan Alda in The Blacklist. F. Murray Abraham in Homeland. Bo Bridges in Masters of Sex. Reg E. Cathy in House of Cards. Michael J. Fox in The Good Wife. And Pablo Schreiber in Orange is the New Black. And I went with oldest, most famous, <laughs> Bo Bridges. Well, you know, that could also hold true for, like, F. Murray Abraham. I suppose. Um... I don't know. I'm going with Orange is the New Black. I think it's still a little bit of a critical darling. Yeah. Outstanding guest actress in a drama series. Candy Alexander Scandal. Rachel Brosnan uh, in House of Cards. Allison Janney in Masters of Sex. Margot Martindale in The Americans. Diana Rigg, Game of Thrones. Cicely Tyson, How to Get Away with Murder. And, you know, I'm probably leaning that your choice, Allison Janney, is probably who's going to win. Right. I'd really, really like to see Diana Ring in Game of Thrones win. And I think she has a chance because a lot of the Emmy voters here, you know, Game of Thrones a big show. Somebody should win. But the Emmys have traditionally said, genre show's bad. Yes, but this is just guest <laughs> actress. Yes. You know, it's yeah. not a big category. We right. can give it to them. Yeah. Now, there's also the idea that Cicely Tyson, who's a big name, um, hasn't appeared in a lot of stuff on right. television. That's true. She could get it, because sometimes they like to do that for these uh, guest ones. That's true. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. Jonathan Banks, Better Call Saul, Jim Carter, Downton Abbey, Alan Cumming, Good Wife, Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones, Michael Kelly, House of Cards, Ben Mendelsohn, Bloodline. I can't believe you picked Downton Abbey. <laughs> do you even know who Jim Carter plays on Downton Abbey? Uh, yeah. Who? Uh, he's the servant, and he's the, uh, the, the butler. Isn't he? Okay, the butler. Butler, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if he was going to... Well, you know, you can't really say this was not his best season. Oh, okay. I mean, I can say that, but, you know, it, it's not like he hasn't been nominated for anything else. Right. Um, I'm going to go with House of Cards, Michael Kelly. Okay. Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Uzo uh, Duba from Orange is the New Black. Christine Baranski from The Good Wife. That's her second nomination, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Lots of people repeat. Mm -hmm. Amelia Clark, Game of Thrones. Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey. Lena Headley, Game of Thrones. And Christina Hendricks from Mad Men. And we're both going with Mad Men. Last season. Last season lock. <laughs> and Mad Men, for the most part, has been pretty much passed over a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> by the Academy. Outstanding lead actor in a drama series, Kyle Chandler, Bloodline, Jeff Daniels, Newsroom, John Hamm, Mad Men, Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Leif Schreiber, Ray Donovan, Kevin Spacey, House of Cards. Ray Donovan? No. Yeah. <laughs> the show we are like, they make a big deal about it. Like, what show is this? Who is Ray Donovan? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'm going John Hamm, Mad Men. I'm going Kevin Spacey, House of Cards. Uh, I, you know, I just think Netflix is kind of, in a way, they kind of peaked and they went back down. <laughs> so I think they might get a shot there. Outstanding lead actress in a drama series: Claire Danes, Homeland; Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder; Taraji P. Henson, Empire; Tatiana Maslany, Orphan Black; Elizabeth Moss, Mad Men; and Robin Wright, House of Cards. And I went with Claire Danes, Homeland, because of the repeat rule. She's mm -hmm. won before. And I'm going with Empire, because this is really the only nomination for Empire. Mm. And it did so well. It started off and it kept building and building. And I think that's going to attract some people to vote for it. You may be right. Outstanding comedy series. Louie, Modern Family, Parks and Rec, Silicon Valley, Transparent, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Veep. Now, I said it's going to be transparent, 
I don't think that is the outstanding comedy series, but I think that's how it'll get voted. And I'm hoping that final season lock will win for Parks and Rec. Yeah. I don't. I'm not hopeful, but I am hoping that you know that that's going to happen. Yes. Outstanding drama series. Better Call Saul, Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones, Homeland, House of Cards, Mad Men, and Orange is the New Black. And we both picked Mad Men. We did. Last season lock. Last locked. season lock. Yep. <laughs> you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife Treat Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching and enjoy the Emmys. <laughs>